fear the wolf pack yeah that's where florida state has struggled this season you mentioned trevor they want to get more direct and that pressure too much pressure has been the downfall but here we go underway in tallahassee first kick by the seminoles we're ready to get started Right away, a wolf pack throw. It'll be Leah Hall Robinson. Headed around the midfield. Now a Lou. Rosalia Lou, a freshman, plugged into that midfield with some injuries. Here's a break for the wolf pack. Lauren Flynn on the defense. Couple of changes to that seminal back line and lineup tonight as we saw early on Leah Pace on the back line where she's plugged and played this season a little bit Trevor an excellent versatile player coming over from Pitt and she's really been everywhere as you said she's been a super sub off the bench traditionally in the last couple years of her playing career this is her last as a collegiate athlete She's been certainly excellent at killing games over the course of her career, so you'll put her up in the nine spot. She's worked her way into the midfield, and here in situations like this, giving her a spot here at right back, she's had a little bit of work there too. And where the Seminoles have been dangerous, interplay in the midfield out wide to Beata Olsen. Finds Jody Brown back to Olsen. Olsen, two Wolfpack defenders on her. Works her way around. Fernanda Soto will say a little too much body from the Swede. Olsen really digging in here hard. Deflection going off and close to the end line and just a little bit too much of the hip draws a little bit too much contact. If it was Olsen who was on the other end of that, it would have been a very awkward ball <laughs> and a free kick really close to the end line. Right along, that's the, that's the bottom of the shortest corners you could probably ask for. Yeah, Olsen, one of those players for Florida State that shifted from her natural position essentially has now gone to the wing, and she's found a lot of success, normally known for her goal-scoring ability, has now been finding her teammates and opening things up for others. Yeah, over the course of her seminal career, she has been placed in the nine spot primarily, and after the record-setting season she had in 2021 en route to a national championship, you know, she's really found a lot of attention. A lot of the center backs that she's faced have really keyed on her, haven't allowed her to have the type of goal scoring success she had in 2021. But what that does is it frees everybody else up. And now she's found a little bit more freedom over there on the right wing. Yeah, four career assists entering this season for Olsen, two assists in the last two games. Now Gilchrist across to Flynn. Back with Leilani Nesbeth, who under Brian Penske has settled into the number six role holding midfielder and nothing but praise from head coach Penske. Ironically enough, she's the furthest back here, making it a, kind of like a five back line at the moment. But she has been the alpha on this team in terms of energy. Really pumps this team up in a lot of different ways. And, she has scoring capability as well from long range. She is the complete package of what you want in terms of a leader, especially using your voice and bringing the energy. Pulls the strings in the midfield. Is Nesbeth now Huff out wide to Pace. Cuts inside, finds Brown, back to Pace. Back to EY Seminoles, dominating possession thus far. For the Wolfpack, this is something they're all too accustomed to this season. It's an uncomfortable feeling playing many behind the ball. Here's Jody Brown working in the corner cross, trying to pick out Moni Echigini. Rosalia Lou clears it away with Woner. Now Nesbeth on the attacking side, making her presence felt. Just see the range that Nesbeth has, and not only that she can get up and down the pitch, she can send the ball through the pitch as well. She has been 
probably the best through ball provider for Florida State this season. They have been excellent on the through ball. That has led to a lot of run on goals. Here is Nesbeth. Jody Brown. Kawagishi, the tackle on the Jamaican national. Now Brown again. Off the heel of Huff. Patient is Florida State. Taylor Huff inside. Works it out on the flank. Ron Ewy. Tries to find it back to Huff. Keeps it in. Now Echigini. Fighting in the box. Huff able to poke it to Nesbeth. Back to Huff. Back to Nesbeth. Nesbeth! Always a threat. We talked about her on defense, but a couple goals she scored in her career from outside the 18. Well, she started out as a midfielder, an attacking, an attacking midfielder, and even a forward, so she has this capability in her arsenal. Nice little give and go back and forth. NC State allowing so much lateral ball possession and ball passing, and just passing through that center laterally for Florida State to be at will with what they want to do. Kind of find a way for NC State to just insert themselves Get a foot in and just find a way to just break, break it the other way. Yeah, what is the best way to deal with this seminal pressure? You just have to engage. And I know that's so, it's easier said than done. Don't get me wrong. And, you know, these are some of the best athletes in all of college soccer here that you're dealing with. But you can't be afraid of the challenge. You have to agitate Florida State. You're not going to win this game by just letting them walk up and down the pitch. You have to find a way to work and outwork Florida State in the midfield can't let them get too deep, otherwise they know how they are masters at smothering you in the attacking third. Jody Brown finds Echegini, the leading goal scorer for the seven of Beato Olsen, a shot. But the flag is up offsides. Olsen close to collecting her fourth goal of the season, but this is the work rate I'm talking about. Jody Brown wins the ball off of Kawagishi, and then Florida State just finds the open space down the right again, and Olsen just a tick offside that keeps this game squared. Taylor Huff in transition. Has space, finds Echigini, lets it go past with a shot deflected. So that shot off Soto. I have to say, Soto with the patience of mind to not panic and still stay in front of the ball and Echigini. However, the Seminoles are rewarded with a corner. This is an area where the Wolfpack have really given up too many corners this season, which has led to a lot of opportunities for their opponents to score on them. Florida State, one of the top in the conference in corner kicks per game. Huff with the delivery. A little too much juice. Pace still fighting, cleared away by the Wolfpack. Hey, Mackenzie, what you got for us down there? Is once again packed tonight, but playing in front of large crowds is nothing new for the Wolfpack. NC State ranks 14th nationally and third in the ACC for cumulative attendance. Earlier this season, NC State's record-breaking crowd hit fire marshal capacity at just under 4,000 fans when they faced off against the UNC Tar Heels. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mackenzie. Yeah, the Seminole Soccer Complex regularly is packed out, but down and up in North Carolina, they do it a little bit differently when it comes to soccer. Yeah, it's, it's soccer country up there in North Carolina. You don't need to say much more than North Carolina and Duke and then NC State setting attendance records. Not just a single game attendance record. They did that twice this season, Jack, with the average and total attendance overall too. So Wolfpack certainly know how to draw a crowd. And when you have the top quality teams in the ACC coming to your door and with the expectation of what this NC State Wolfpack totally has, you're going to get a crowd. Yeah, every season... Wolfpack attendance ranks among the top 15 in the country. NC State trying to clear Nesbeth. Has it go, finds the pay, crossover. 
cleared away. Esbeth again, out to pace. Pace will play a ball, back post, finds the play. A wonderful idea from Leah Pace. And Caitlin Zapay on the volley, just over the bar. And the Winter Springs Junior trying to make the most of this start that she's in, only her second of the season. The volley off the foot of Pace to Zapay. Nice little skill displayed on there. Just got to get the ball down. Caitlin Zapay, her 50th career game tonight. Scored a goal last week versus Duke, her second of the season. Ended up being a game winner. Florida State defeated Duke up in Durham, 4-0. And a player that has so much praise again from Brian Penske on her work ethic and what she's been able to accomplish here in Tallahassee. Yeah, she's really starting to grow. You see that she's getting more comfortable on the pitch with each passing game. She's been here with Florida State for a number of years now. She's very measured on the ball, very balanced. But you can see her start to take more chances and have a little bit more skill develop over the course of her career. Well, with more on Caitlin Zapay, let's send it back down to McKenzie. Of the season, she's a player that Coach Penske has been really excited about during her FSU career. But unfortunately, in spring of 2023, Zip battled with some injuries. But since returning, she's certainly proven to be a dark horse asset for this team. In the past five games, Caitlin has tallied six points for the Knolls. Coming on strong late is Caitlin Zapay, or Zip, as they call her, and you mentioned Mackenzie. It's the starting nod tonight. Here's Gilchrist. Nesbeth, good move. Slots it in behind. Jody Brown hustling, kicks it across. There she is, zip on the back post. What a save. Oh my goodness, Olivia Pratapis in net. A wonder. Going post to post was Pratapis. Beautiful little cheeky move by Nesbeth, and then lets Jody Brown go on the run to track it down the header and just a diving stop with the mitts by Pratapas at the last possible second. Beautifully headed ball down by Zepe. And Pratapas with the highway robbery on the back door. Actually Huff on that back post, but what a save from Pratapas. She's been tasked with a lot this season. The starting keeper coming into the year for the Wolfpack, Maria Echezaretta, injured in the fourth match for the Wolfpack. And Pratapas has stepped in, done a great job. Head coach Tim Santoro, really happy with how she has performed this season, especially as of late. Went down 1-0 to Notre Dame in their last matchup, but held her own in net. Wolfpack faced the most shots they have all year with 24. Yeah, I mean, over the last three games, they've only given up one goal, and that was the goal in the last game to Notre Dame. Now crossed in the box. Up off the head of Echigini will be a goal kick. In fact, they've only given up two goals in the last four games overall, so Pratavis has done an excellent job as you see Florida State continue to put the pressure on this Wolfpack defense. And a look at Oni Echigini in Florida State. Talk about their ACC play. In the first three games, seven goals allowed, and it seemed when they had that draw to North Carolina, that last second goal by Mimi Van Zandt, and the season started to turn around and click a little bit more for the Knowles. Yeah, it was really a gut check moment there for Florida State, recognizing they were getting away with a few games there, and really, as you mentioned, you know, that game against North Carolina needed to squeak that one out just to come to a draw, get a point out of that with Mimi Van Zandt scoring with two seconds left. After that, though, they got some favorable matchups a little bit against Miami and Louisville, who haven't exactly found offensive rhythm this season, so they were able to lock it in defensively, protect themselves on long balls and transition defense. They were able to really settle that down and really find themselves with three straight shutouts after that North Carolina game. That really found a rhythm for them. And another shout-out, as we mentioned, on Sunday in Durham. So a foul called... A free kick for NC State. 
Taken by Brianna Weber, slipped in behind. Ronnie Y able to clear away. Now, fortunate Florida State still had some numbers in the back line. Look, that ball had a funky bounce to it. Luckily, it was EY there for the last second save before Annika Walter came in flying. As we see a big hip check here by Olsen. No foul was called. Probably should have been one in all honesty. It's physical so far in the first 15 minutes of this matchup. Jody Brown applying pressure to Amika Kawagishi. This is the difference in approach right here. You see Florida State's defensive approach versus NC State's. You know, NC State will lay back. They don't want, they want to protect. They don't want to give up anything on the run of play. Any sort of big chance where there's some open space. But Florida State is just as aggressive on their attack as they are on their defense here. Their defense is suffocating. They want to get the ball back as quickly as possible. NC State starting to settle in a little bit more, more touches on the ball. That out for a throw. It'll be Leah Hall Robinson. A senior originally forward was Hall Robinson. And again, another player, Tim Santoro, has nothing but praise for her. She started as a forward her whole career, now moved to that outside back spot. And he'll put her up against any outside back in the country. This ball working around Roquet. Coming out to claim, that was freshman Hannah Jabril. Taking the shot. First real moment of a threat for NC State that they were able to generate on their own. Jabril, one of those players that Coach Santoro really has a lot of high praise for in, the, in the, her potential development here with this club for years to come. She actually missed quite a few games here to start the season, which kind of delayed her impact on this team, but she's been able to get her feet back and work her way into the starting lineup and was able to collect a goal not too long ago, and she's even had a threat of a goal in the game against Notre Dame that would have gotten them the lead, so she's really coming on. Could be a potential star in the making for the Wolfpack for years to come. She started to play better as the season progressed. Three of her points this, this season have all come in the last four games for NC State. Working out wide. They'll call a Florida State throw. In. Taken by Ron Ewy. Now pace. Out wide, Beata Olsen. Soto defending. Olsen backs it out. Jody Brown. Kawagishi on her with a shot on the left foot. Just wide and a look at head coach Brian Penske, his second year, a part of the Florida State Seminoles looking to go undefeated in the regular season. I mean, he came in with an excellent resume back in 2022. And with what he's done this season on the verge of Florida State's first undefeated season, Never in the history of this program has that happened. He's obviously had so much tournaments, you know, tournament appearances, SEC coach of the year in his time at Tennessee. But boy, this is uh, one certainly for the record books, especially if they can come away with a victory or even a draw to come away undefeated in the entire regular season. This would be a feather in his cap and for this entire program. And he's just done a magnificent job, Jack, of just really even evolving this Florida State team. And, it really goes into the attack. You know, he comes in with a more direct style of the game where Florida State, kind of this is what the old school Florida State team is, as you're seeing tonight. Possession on the ball, taking their time, working their way, breaking the defense down. He's implemented their more direct line of assault in terms of going long ball, more direct through balls, and run of play with athleticism a little bit more. It's the perfect mold and mesh of this program coming together, and it makes them so almost unstoppable to beat and it makes them more dangerous perhaps than ever if they're clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, it's been much more of a Brian Penske-esque team in year two. You can see his remnants all over. And he told us, Trevor, he sits in his chair, he just looks out and says he's a lucky guy. You know, he's done a lot for this program in his two years, but players he has around him that he has brought in have flashed and have 
And might I just say, it's probably a little bit more relaxing, too. They've installed new seats this season in the middle of the year, so it's <laughs> nice to sit back, you know, obviously watching your team succeed, but, you know, might, might be more comfortable over there, too, with those new seats. Here's Olsen, slips in behind, tries to find Jody Brown. Now Brown, she'll stop. Olsen, back post, at Chikini. Pounce down, at Chikini, dancing. Back to Nesbeth. See the way Florida State, though, covers on, de on the defense in the back side here. Even when they get dispossessed, they have someone back that can collect the ball if it does go the other way. They're already in position. They're thinking two, three steps ahead of what they want to do in case something doesn't exactly go according to plan initially. Yeah, it's been relentless pressure for the Seminoles, especially in their last couple of games. Finds Nesbeth inside. Back to Flynn. Here's Nesbeth. Dangerous area for her. Olsen, one time into the box. Caitlin Zappé tries to bring it down. Nesbeth with space. She can take it. Here's Olsen. And they'll say it bumped off of Olsen, a goal kick. But Trevor, you see it's it's Florida State suffocating pressure and NC State is packed back against their goal. Pun intended? <laughs> Maybe? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, no, I mean, it really is what NC State's been having to resort to do. And we've mentioned the injury situation for them. I mean, Jamise Joseph also with the red card, not able to complete her season here in the final game. You know, I think Florida, I think NC State really misses Jaden Thomas, who's been out all year with an injury. She's been, she's a senior, who's so excellent as a holding midfielder, but she's really technical on the ball, very versatile as well, so she can be a left-footed striker. They're missing Brooklyn Holt as well, who was injured against UNC. I mentioned Etcha, Etcha Zaretta as well, their keeper, one of their young defenders as well. Alex Moore is out right now, so... They've been really hit by the injury bug, and honestly, last year as well. So this program has not been able to really get out of the blocks the last couple seasons and really showcase what they're fully capable of. But this is what they've had to do to stay in games. It's the best strategy that Coach Santoro can really accumulate and really put together right now. And we said it earlier, prior to this season, six straight NCAA tournament appearances. Only one of them was a loss in the first round, which was last year in penalty kicks to UCF. Prior to that, it's second round or better. A couple sweet 16 appearances. So Santoro knows how to get there and get it done. Here's Jody Brown. Back with Olsen. Seminoles favoring the right flank. But Olsen on that wing and Leah Pace outside. Here is number 30, Pace. Whipped into the box. Pratapis into her mitts. Too direct right to Pratapis. One of the, might be one of the easier saves she has all night. Pratapis still sporting red and, and white. Just in with a different logo, the Louisville transfer. Had some playing time last year. It's always good to have a keeper come off your bench if necessary with experience under their belt. She stepped in. Here's Echikini with space, a shot. Deflected, Brianna Weber able to get in front. Now can the Wolfpack connect a few passes? Just get up the pitch a little bit, but stay active, stay moving. Now we see the pressure. Beata Olsen making it difficult for Brianna Weber. You can't stay stationary with this Florida State team. You've got to be able to have plays in the back of your head and movement, not just with you on the ball, but off the ball as well. You have to have something and concoct something in your mind to progress the play forward. Pratapis will boot. And we mentioned the crowds early on for either side. FSU crowd starting to get 
more into it. Nil nil. 25 minutes through this first half. Thank you for joining us. Alongside Trevor Grode, I'm Jack Cavavit, Mackenzie Blaze down on the sideline. That touch from Leah Pace. Fernanda Soto will take the throw. Olu out wide. Hall Robinson. Now Alexis Strickland tied for the lead in goals on this Wolfpack squad. Now over to Taylor Chisholm, the birthday girl. Turned 20 years old today. Happy birthday, Taylor. Now a fight in the box. Hannah, Hannah Jabril over the back of Leah Pace. It'll go the other way. Hey, Mackenzie, what you got for us down there on NC State? Thanks, guys. With this match being the Wolfpack's last game of the season, a win over the number one ranked Seminoles would obviously mean the world and their seniors. Coach Santoro said this morning that their game plan is to split the match into 15 to 20 minute segments, try to win as many of those as possible, and just go from there. So far, I'd say they're doing a pretty good job. I certainly are, Mackenzie. Nil nil in the first half in Tallahassee versus the number one ranked team in the land. Yeah, I'd have to concur from McKenzie right there. NC State just doing a nice job in the final third of just getting in front of balls. Only, only one dangerous chance, and that was on the Huff header on the backside, and Pertapis making, making one of the highlight saves perhaps of her career. Doing a nice job marking in front and denying Florida State of getting in close to the six at the very, at the very least. And really, it comes down to Coach Santoro telling us, you know, we're trying to just break this down in like 15, 20 minute segments of the game. Reassess where we are from there real quick and just go through and roll through the punches. That's what they're going to depend on and see if they can just look for a chance and capitalize on an opportunity. That's what it's felt like thus far. First 15 minutes seem to be all Seminoles. And now the last 15, NC State applying some more pressure, generating some chances. All it takes is one. Taylor Huff will knock it back to Christina Roque. Just over the top into the hands of Pratapis. Pratapis, the tenth member of her family to play collegiate athletics. It's in her genes, in her blood. Showed it all on that save earlier on. Junior from Clemens, North Carolina. As we've said, it's come on as of late. Not bad also coming back to your home state from some hometown fans as well. It has three shutouts on the season in reliefs, having not played every game. Also had an eight save performance, best of her career against Denver. She's done, she's, as Coach Santoro said, she's come in and done a very serviceable job for the Wolfpack. Now our first substitutions of the match. Maggie Taitano checking in, along with Sophia Wynn on the back line. That'll give Jody Brown and Leah Pace a quick break. Also, Olivia Garcia, who also is a phenomenal singer, sung the national anthem prior to this match, checks in for Caitlin Zebeck. So here's a chance, Trevor, for NC State, get bodies in the box, a long set piece, a place where Florida State two games ago conceded versus Pitt. It'll be touched ahead of Kawagishi. Lobs into the box, tries to find Strickland. Good, dis good discipline by Florida State. I apologize, Jack, but just to 
go off your point about the pit game, yeah, they were a little bit disorganized or not ready. Perhaps it was more of a direct line from midfield on that goal that they allowed against Pitt late in the first half that gave Pitt a 1-0 lead. Florida State doing a nice job of staying together as Kawagishi kind of delayed that initial free kick. So the first corner of the match for NC State. Taken on the right foot. Kawagishi out swinging ball. Taylor Huff might have saved a goal. Now out top of the box, off the bar. The freshman, Jade Bordelow, with a strike. And the goalkeeper's best friend back again, off the bar. A little home cooking here with the post. I think Roquet is going to be thinking here. Huff does not get all of this, and it rolls right to Chisholm. And Bordelow teeing one up, just going a little too high off that crossbar. But, boy, she uncoiled one there, Jack. Oh. Some power behind that shot. One of five international recruits on this team is Jane Bordalo. Another look. Good form, just a little leaning back. If you want to get that ball a little lower, just lean a little bit more forward. But I can't really knock the quality on that shot. That was really excellently well done by Bordalo. Now we mentioned NC State out of contention for ACC postseason play, but they're clawing away in this first half, not making it easy for Florida State, and that might have been the best chance that we've seen this game. Absolutely was, and just laying back a little bit here, just you know, embrace and endure the early push by the Seminoles, and if you can get out of there without letting go a goal, Maybe it frees up a little bit. Substitutions come in for Florida State. Maybe you can leave your starters in, and maybe you can get some more favorable matchups, and now NC State can get a little bit more momentum. So we mentioned the subs for Florida State. On the other side, NC State, a little bit different story, much less depth for that team. A lot of players having to run for the entire 90, as we'll certainly see tonight. Florida State now opting to be a little bit more patient Here is Huff. Touch pass Robinson in the box, finds Olsen. Just off the top of the head. Would be out of Olsen. And you notice, I think, Onia Chagini, her looking down at her hands, thinking, ooh, if you let me, just if you let that ball go past you, B, I have it right here in the center of the six. It's been a couple goals for Echagini this season. Off of those crosses. And we mentioned earlier in the show some to play for in the ACC and how that tournament will shape up. An update, Wake Forest with a 2-0 lead over Miami. With a win versus Miami, Wake Forest would clinch that sixth spot and lock up the top six teams for the ACC. So we will be sure to keep you posted throughout the broadcast. Here's Nesbeth. Now with the freshman, Maggie Taitano. 27 minutes last game for her versus Duke. Kawagishi, she's been busy in that midfield, had her hands full. The insurgents by Flynn getting very aggressive, cutting off Woner. Now Taitano. Another substitute as well with the ball, Mimi Van Zanten. That left back spot. Still no pressure from NC State by their top line. Still laying back and looking for a chance to counter. Florida State fairly content with just keeping on and hanging on to the ball like this. That seems the style for NC State, as you're saying, Trevor. In a situation right here, try and win the ball and get a counterattack instead. It's Florida State 
and Sophia win. And that's just the difficulty of, you know, being so spending so much time on defense. You're not exactly in position. You're, you know, putting 11 in the low block. You have to, like, run your way out and find the open space. But by that time, you know, you're getting pressured with the ball, and you have to find a way to just get it forward. Florida State will continue to flip it from offense to defense, but still maintain pressure in all facets. And there's been no rush. Beata Olsen lays it off for Sophia Wynn, takes a deflection off of Fernanda Soto, and will be the second corner for the Seminoles. Taylor Hoff will line up on the left foot to the back post. Protopoulos comes out to claim. He'll say a deflection off Florida State and a goal kick. And another sub for Florida State. It'll be Peyton Norse, another freshman taking out Oni Echigini. Norse, one of the top ranked freshmen out of Denver, Colorado. 13 minutes last game for her versus Duke. Yeah, Norse really had a chance to break out against Boston College. Got her only two goals of the season in the waning minutes of that contest. And a good stop and go. Sophia Wynn plays Olsen into the box. Norse looking for it. Cleared away by Brianna Weber in another corner. Weber's starting to get more time in terms of blocking and getting in front of shots. There's a well-rounded presence about her game. Weber's held it down 90 minutes in all but two matches this season for number three in red. And she's done a really nice job of bringing Taylor Chisholm along with her. Here's Hoff again. Towards the penalty spot cleared away. Jumping up. Speak of Taylor Chisholm. Taking a look, going for some aerial vertical balls here, and Chisholm laying out over Mimi Van Zanten and draws the foul for her efforts. <laughs> so what do you like to see out of a young player really getting the brunt of her starts in this sophomore season? Not shying away from the challenge. Trying to ward off this Florida State attack. Just get the ball back into the center of play at least. And this was a NC State back line coming into this season with two center backs that were a part of that team for five seasons. And now for Tim Santoro to flip the script a bit and plug and play and figure out who was going to be the ones to man up on that back line. And this season it has been Brianna Weber and Taylor Chisholm, and they've done a good job. We still have the outside backs pretty much taken care of with Fernanda Soto. Brooklyn Holt doesn't go down. Might have some more capability back there, but, you know, bringing Leah Hall Robinson down from your attacking line to the back line has been a helpful addition. To the corner, Sophia Wynn. She'll cross back post. Garcia back across for Tapis. Commands the ball. Florida State just going back to the well of going to the right wing, down the right flank, and trying to find a cross. So far, though, NC State's getting a little bit better at it, and the positioning of Florida State not where it needs to be. Maybe those crosses may be coming in too far, too, too often. They're going far post, Jack. Maybe if you find it a little bit more back, outside the six, perhaps, and you find a good matchup, Get someone header on that. It's a much more difficult task for the keeper to find out where that ball is going to be touched in the center versus on the back post. They have a better idea, better vantage point of where they need to be to guard on the far post. Yeah, you said a majority of those crosses tonight have felt like they have drifted back to that back post. Now win, finds Garcia. Titano overlapping, first time into the box. Right to Kawagishi, and an easy clearance. Oh. 
Garcia in the corner. Works over to Huff. Huff tries to slip it behind. Good idea to Olivia Garcia. Taylor Chisholm had other ideas. Nesbeth. Norris able to shield. Plays it ahead to Garcia. Garcia. Back to North with a shot. Pertalpis again. Able to get a hand on the shot of freshman Peyton Norse. And Nesbitt, the senior, giving her a high five, and for good reason, two facets here. Not only the shot, but the hold-up play by Norse to allow this run to continue. Then gets rewarded with the deflection back defensively, and Pertalpis needs to outreach that left arm to poke it over the pole. Huff again, the fourth corner. Now front post, Pertapis punched away. Now the Wolfpack will look to transition. Titano with space. Too big of a touch from Garcia by Titano again. Working is the freshman. Garcia able to claim. Tipped away, Olivia Pertapis. What a game so far. A little poor quality by the Wolfpack allows this to go right back the other way. And Garcia, a little too wide on the shot, but had to draw Pertapis out. Not going to take any chances. So Florida State continuing to crack away, lay the hammer down. Now the fifth corner kick, Pratapis holding her own versus the fourth best scoring offense in the country. Here's Huff. Ops for the back post, tries to find Nesbitt. Touchdown with win. Flicked across, takes a deflection, and another corner for Florida State. Seminoles really starting to rack those up, and they've gotten stronger this season in, those corner, in the corner department. Like you touched on it, one of the most successful teams off corners. In fact, do sport some size, which can match up for Florida State. They're really good. Olivia, uh, Lauren Flynn's had a goal not too long ago off a corner, far side. That might be what they want to go to here. Now Huff with the right foot. Out of the six box, Lauren Flynn able to get ahead. Just wide of that top corner. It's a little more farther out than what we've seen Flynn particularly do off corners. She's mostly been closer to the post, so that was a little bit farther out wide. See Olivia Pratapis coming into tonight, averaging just under five saves a game, already four in this first half. That's also been a story for Florida State. They've primarily been second half dominant under Brian Penske, 74 and 14 in the second half. But Trevor, this season in the first half, they're 11 and eight. I mean, they've been just insane in the second half. That's really what they've been able to really point to in terms of their success. Now another chance. And another corner. And another corner. And they really have done a beautiful job of not panicking in moments like this, even with the game either you know, at a draw or even against Pitt a week ago, going down one into the break, still coming out and finding a way to win. They do a great job of communicating with each other and not hesitating and still continuing to execute their game plan. Huff on the left foot. This one, dangerous on the line. And Zanton finds win. When a dangerous ball takes a deflection and in the net. Just like that. And look who it is again, the senior, Warren Flynn. Wynn gets this outlet. She works it with the right foot and just Bit of a pinball situation going off multiple defenders and even off the back of Olsen's head, I believe. But a nice ball, in-swinging ball by Wynn creates chaos inside the six. 
and Flynn with the wherewithal to find the ball and strike while the iron's hot, and Florida State finds the net right before the first half here, Jack. Right as we talked about it, pinball it was, Trevor Lauren Flynn the winner. Her fourth career goal, second of the season, second in the last three matches. And as we're talking about the first half, second half difference, the damn breaks for the Seminoles are on top 1-0. Well, it just goes to prove you can't really only game plan for Florida State's attackers, which obviously are the most lethal part of their lineup. You can't, you can't just worry about Oni Echeguini, the Jordan Dudleys of the world, Jody Brown, Beata Olson, Taylor Huff. You know, there's some on the back line here that have the capability of scoring, and Lauren Flynn's the best of the bunch on that back line. Here's Nazbeth. Now Olsen. Sophia Wynn trying to overlap looked a bit of miscommunication. And Flynn's just such an opportunistic score when she needs to be and off those set pieces, off those free kicks, that's when she really loves to come down with a head of steam from that back line position. And she has such vision. She has a great view of the ball, Jack, for where she can see what's gonna happen. She can just charge right from her center back spot. And if there's an opportunity with the ball being free, she'll take advantage of it. Yeah, another player that has started to even come on more strong as the season has progressed. One of the main reasons, not only for the shutouts that Florida State has able to produce, but the goals as well now. And for Lawrence, Florida State came to two seconds left with Mimi Van Zandt. They also let one slip away against their arch rival Duke. And so they've had a lot of chances to have a little bit of a better record than what they've put on the pitch. But yeah, being trailing Boston College right now has to be a little bit concerning in terms of their seating. They're in the ACC tournament, but they wouldn't really want to have a less or a more difficult matchup than what they would have already in this ACC tournament. And that's where the seating truly implicates Florida State as a ball is played in the box. Crossed over, Jody Brown takes down Kawagishi. It'll go the other way. But Trevor, that's really where you see the difference if North Carolina drops that game and how that ACC tournament is seeded because we've mentioned it time and time again with the level of play and the dominance in the ACC across the entire conference. You could potentially see Florida State and North Carolina facing off in a semifinal, which could be a championship in any other tournament. Yeah, the, no question. And then, you know, really it's between the, between the three and five seats, three, four, five is where that mix still isn't exactly locked up yet. That has to still be determined tonight. So that's with Notre Dame, North Carolina, and Pitt. Those are really the teams. Even Clemson can drop one down too. So really those, those seatings right now are really what's up for grabs and what's at stake for them. For Florida State, really nothing other than, as we mentioned, <laughs> at least ad nauseum, it's, it seems at this point, the undefeated season, undefeated ACC regular season, obviously, and trying to lock up the outright regular season championship. They have the number one seed here, but you know, all of these teams really wanting to you know, pad up their resumes, obviously, for the NCAA tournament as well. Still some to play for for Florida State, but on the other side, NC State, how do you keep dealing with that pressure, this pressure in the second half from the Seminoles? Well, look, you've got 45 minutes left for the rest of this season. You know, you empty the gas tank, leave nothing left out on the pitch. So you put a full effort, but really just you have to, you know, match their energy. You have to match Florida State's aggressiveness at some point. Pick your moments. I don't think you can really get into a foot race with Florida State the way NC State's laying back. Otherwise, you're going to gas yourself out even more. But pick your moments and really have support in terms of going back up the pitch and getting into open spaces where those passes, if you need to connect, can be more helpful to you and more, and you have a higher probability of getting back up the field of play. Yeah, a couple minutes into this, it's been mostly Florida State being patient. Slipped in Jody Brown. She's got time, we'll play it in. Chested away. That's Mackenzie Smith, the freshman. She checks in for her first minutes of the game. International. Another one of those five international recruits. Out of England, who's had a lot of international experience, actually, was actually with England's UEFA U19 team. 
Links back. Working around in the box. There's Wynn. Excuse me, it's Lauren Flynn. Not one, but two for the senior night. Have a day. Flynn just buzzing around the goal. And she stays so calm with the ball bouncing around on the ground off of these corners. This one, good luck trying to stop it. You see Zapay with a nice little flick, back flick heel. And yet through that mosh pit, Flynn is able to just find the ball, put that foot on it, and just roll it past, squeak it by. And quickly, Florida State out to a strong second half start once again with another goal. But now it's 2-0. <laughs> there is the second half start. Have yourself a match, Lauren Flynn. And last couple games for the defender as Jody Brown showing off the pace. Set, she couldn't find that pass to Echigini. Here is Echigini. Echigini, who they call Joe, the first seminal in Florida State history with back-to-back -back ACC Player of the Weeks. She has come on strong in the last couple of weeks, Trevor. Scoring goals, three braces on the season. And two goals on Sunday versus Duke. And there's another! Zip with the rip. The third of the night for the Seminoles. And Caitlin Zippe back-to-back -back games as a goal scorer. It's like lightning out of a bottle coming out of the gates in the second half. Just too much quality here and too much space. Smith can only just stand up and look up into the night sky. How did that even happen so fast? But Zepe quickly zip and zagging her way into the box. Still fresh as a daisy in Florida State. Now on the warpath, 3-0, just like that. Less than five minutes here in the second half, Jack. I mean, it, it, you kept saying it, and Tim Santoro having to deal with his Seminoles attack, especially in the second half. It's a lot, as we've seen on those graphics and those comparisons. But it's all smiles for Florida State as the Wolfpack will try and make something happen in their own right. Now this is the kind of start you needed off the ball here by the Wolfpack. Try and get something going. You just got to have an attack mindset as owner st still down on the pitch. That's not a good sign. As if Wolf the Wolfpack have not had any more injury troubles this year. Yeah, we've mentioned the injuries that the Wolfpack have had to deal with. It was Mackenzie Smith checking in. She was the first sub of the game for NC State. The rest of the squad was sticking strong from the first half. Good to see Annika Wohner, the junior out of Germany, also tied on this team with four goals, leading the way with Alexis Strickland. And Wohner's had a pretty decorated career with the Wolfpack. Of course, her time in Germany playing with Bayern Munich. German youth national system as well. Up and comer, maybe internationally, you might see her one day in those international tournaments with the Germans. Warner checked in the most minutes of her season last week, 84 versus Notre Dame. And she can play high in the attack too. She's got much more physicality here. This is going the other way. And so Taylor Huff's putting her arms in the air, saying, how is that on me? And Rosalie Alou is the one who took the hard knock. And we mentioned the injuries. Another look, it was a touch from Taylor Huff. Oh, banging of the head hard there, Jack, for Alou. That is not a pretty sight. Rosalie Alou, another one of those freshmen, I think I mentioned early on, has seen a lot more minutes with their senior, Jaden Thomas, another midfielder, out with injury in the beginning of this season. And Alou started the last 11 games, an assist for her in the Virginia game where NC State came out on top 2-1 a couple weeks ago. Well, thank, thankfully, Alou's back up. That was a really hard 
tumble down onto the pitch. Head really whiplashed back hard, bouncing off the grass. So there's been so much emphasis the last several years in sports, collegiately, professionally, even on the youth level, about concussion protocols. So you don't want to take any of those head injuries to chance. You see, she's just trying to shake it off. Excellent sign, though, that she's able to walk off. Yeah, great to see Rosalia Lou on two feet, walking off on her own power, as you said. Never want to mess around when it comes to those head injuries. Bigger than the game. So Mackenzie Smith back in. It's also Mary Frances Sims will check in for Rosalie Alou. Sims, her first minutes of the night, 12 minutes last. Game versus Notre Dame. And another freshman, another player that Tim Santoro will hope to develop in this program as they keep improving moving forward. Yeah, I think for tonight, you know, now you're down 3-0 and, you know, you're going to keep fighting to the bitter end. But I think if you're Tim Santoro, you empty your bench. See what you got right now. Get your get your players, you know, that haven't gotten a lot of playing time that you have available. Get them some quality minutes against the number one team in the country. See where you measure up. A lot of freshmen out on the pitch for NC State. This one fed into the box. Off the foot of Beata Olsen into the mitts of Olivia Pertapis. At the bare minimum, it gives your starters a chance to maybe just reevaluate how the game's going a little bit, give themselves a chance to catch their breath, get under their legs a little bit more, or get their legs back under them, and take a breather for just a little moment, just to come out a little bit fresher 10, 15 minutes later in the half. And you saw it after the goal. The intensity picked up. They wanted to get after it, but we mentioned it too, Trevor. NC State without Jamish Joseph. Preseason, all ACC. Three goals on the season. But how about this? Most goals all time in conference play. Florida State broke their own record against Duke for the most goals for this University and now in third all time, just behind Virginia's 2014 season in North Carolina in 2007. And they're still, I don't know if they're aware of that record, but you know, they still will gladly collect goals tonight. And as they prepare now for the ACC tournament, when they already have their tickets punched to carry North Carolina. But they're, but they're just so relentless, Jack. I mean, that, that's just the thing. They've, I don't think they've ever had a... It, it's hard for me to say this. We've been, I've been watching a lot of Florida State soccer, call a lot of their games for the last several years. The collection of talent on this team is something special, and that's saying something, given the amount of star quality that has come through this program. I mean, just... To, I mean, obviously for the last 15-plus years, but, you know, in particular, the last 10 or so has been absolutely phenomenal, and the results that this team's put up is unmatched. As Taylor Hoff lifts to the back post, Lauren Flynn, not one, not two, a hat trick for the senior. How classy is that? The only thing classier is if Lauren Flynn dressed up in a magician's outfit and how appropriate pulls off the hat trick with the head again. She has found a home there, far side off, set pieces, free kicks, corner kicks. She's a wizard right now, creating some magic for the Seminoles here tonight on senior night. A little bit of magic. Lauren Flynn, the second hat trick in all of ACC play this season. And it comes from Lauren Flynn, the defender, who entered this year with two career goals. No better way to cap off a senior night for a number eight in gold. They might have to elevate that poster just above the rest of them just because of how good she's played. 
Yeah, hey, with more on that poster and Lauren Flynn, the hat trick hero. Mackenzie, what you got for us? Thank you, guys. The Seminoles' back line has seen some changes in the past three seasons, but one thing has remained constant is Christina Roque in goal and Lauren Flynn at center back. Roque said that having Lauren in front of her has been super comforting. She also added that she loves when Lauren scores because it's the closest she'll get to scoring. I'd say after Lauren scored her third goal of the night, Christina must be pretty happy. Yeah. Thank you, Mackenzie. I could imagine Christina Roque also coming off of her 50th career win as a Seminole. And now she gets to see center back counterpart holding down that back line, Lauren Flynn, with a hat trick. And lost in all of this is still you have an elite goalkeeper in Christina Roque who's not exactly getting a whole lot of work tonight. But leave you and me, after this game, she is going to be getting a ton of it, especially in the ACC tournament. Depending on what kind of matchup they get in the first round or second round, you never know. But this is the time of year for Christina Roque, the last several years since she's been inserted as the starter, where you really get to see her shine. And Florida State's been on tears with her in net deep into the postseason. Yeah, the reason why she was named the 2022 ACC Goalkeeper of the Year as a set piece from NC State. Ronnie Y. Able to go up against Rosalie, excuse me, Hannah Jabril. Here's Jody Brown. Switch the pitch, Ron Ewai. Extremely low block here for the Wolfpack. Not quite 11 behind the ball, but very thin line. About 9 or 10 behind it. As we've seen most of this game, the Seminoles patient, working it back across the field, their back line, waiting for an opening. Again, you know, we've talked about how much Brian Penske's brought the element of directness to this club this year, in the last two years. There's Taylor Hoff direct to Nesbeth. Back to Huff. Nice little dummy by Brown. Brown lets it go. Leah Pace still with it. Now with Huff. Kawagishi trying to start some sort of counter. Try to find Jade Bordalo a little out in front. But this is the kind of style that Florida State's used to historically, as I mentioned before, Jack. They're comfortable, they're still comfortable here playing it slow, just getting the vision down, seeing how your opponent is lined up in a low block in a defensive shape. It's what's brought them several national championships. There are three national championships in the past, so if they need to resort to that, they can, but the evolution of Florida State's attack is now as dynamic and as complete as you might be able to get in college soccer. The directness and the slow buildup play. Here's a break for NC State. Gold jerseys all around, Nesbeth. Able to kick it away from Werner. Now the Wolfpack getting some numbers back up the field. Just kicked out of bounds, Fernanda Soto. EY with space, looking for Olsen. Almost gets a touch. Testing the flexibility with the high point of the ball on the toe, just out of the reach of number nine. Played up to Bordalo, Kawagishi. Kawagishi sees the space, switches the pitch. A freshman, Hannah Jabril. Paul Robinson, Wolfpack, building with numbers now. 
EY. As she's done all season, as versatile as they come on the back line. And yet so precise and getting more precise with each season, Jack. And it's really coming to fruition here for EY this year in what is her senior season. Coming from T Tokyo, Japan, she's been excellent there on that left back position. Had to start the season actually in the midfield due to Leilani Nesbeth not being ready to go with dealing with a nagging injury, but it was really a big facet of the operation in getting through those first two road games, in particular the victory against Texas A&M, setting up Taylor Huff in the waning minutes of that game to come away with the 2-1 win. And, you know, it was quite something special. It was one of the best you know, balls perhaps Florida State's really ever seen to set up you know, into the run of play and the directness and what Brian Penske really has wanted to see from his club. Penske will like this as well. Echigani cuts inside with space into the grass of Fratapis. It's a quality job by Taylor Chisholm forcing Echigani to cut back a little bit outside the box, probably sooner than she would have liked to. It gave Fratapis enough time to see the ball and the shot was right on her. As you saw Hall Robinson slip and fall, and that results in Florida State getting some more time in NC State's half of the pitch. Now Olsen looking to create. In the Nesbeth. Back to pace. Nesbeth trying to play it, slip one through to Zepe off the leg of Olsen, out for a throw in. Mackenzie Smith is tough, man. <laughs> Gonna challenge the Swede right there. Yeah, especially when you see the production of this attack and what they've been able to do. We mentioned now 34 goals in ACC play, Trevor. You take a look at the other three seasons and how many goals they scored in ACC play in those national championship winning seasons. This offense certainly has capability to surpass all three of those years. Well, scoring isn't everything in sports, but obviously that's a great indicator to see with what Florida State can resort to in terms of their history. And even, you know, you look at that 2018 team to only have 17 goals and still come away with a national championship. You know, so as you can see, it really depends on how you can lock down defensively because all these teams that they're going to face in the NCAA tournament have the capability of scoring. It's why they are there. So you're going to have to come away with a tactical game plan, not just on your ability to score, but making sure your opponent stays out of the net. But there's no doubt Florida State has found a little bit of a new identity here with how they approach the game. And I think that should really strike a lot of fear into the potential opponents that will go up against them. Yeah, there's a reason Florida State is the fourth ranked scoring offense in the nation, along with their first in the country, not only in points per game, but assists per game. They've been racking up the accolades as this Florida State attack. In the moment, a couple subs checking in. Maddie Titano takes out Leilani Nesbeth, and Alexis Strickland checks back into the game for Hannah Jabril. A little bit of confusion from the Seminoles. Well, Brown was going to be offside, so thought better of it just to let it roll by. But and you, and you mentioned the the goals per game, Jack. Keep in mind, this is a lot of these games are in the ACC against the top quality collection of teams in the entire country. It's it's even more impressive. Add to the fact that this is only Florida State's 15th game of the season. That's a low number compared to the rest of the country in terms of the amount of game time you get out onto the pitch. So they're doing this at a clip that's really, really impressive against the top teams in the entire country. That's why we've mentioned it. It's why the ACC is such a dominant conference. A lot of players want to go and play there. And we mentioned at 8 o'clock, not now, on the ACC network, number 8, Clemson. There's number 11, Notre Dame. Notre Dame off to a 1-0 lead. Quick, Trevor, that could vault them into the second spot behind Florida State. It very well could, and Notre Dame... Got the rude awakening coming here a couple weeks back about what Florida State's all about. They fell 4-1, to one, but look, Notre Dame's given Florida State fits in the pass as well. Last year, blanked them. 
you know, on their home turf. So, again, you don't, you just never know what you're going to get on a game-to-game -game basis. I mean, the wars that Florida State and North Carolina have gone back and forth with over the years, those battles have been always really close but can get out of hand at times as well. So it really has come down to really they're splitting hairs at moments. And, again, all it takes is one goal to really change the momentum and put you back on your heels or change the dynamics of these games. So <laughs> no matter who gets who, it's going to be all systems go, and it's going to be must-see television in terms of quality soccer. Yeah, it's a great game, Clemson and Notre Dame. Nate Norman done a phenomenal job with that Fighting Irish program, ACC Coach of the Year last season. This year, a little up and down, but he's finding the stride late into the season would be a big win versus Clemson. Yeah, Coach Radwanski over there at Clemson, though, as well, probably, I think, is the team outside of North Carolina really gave Florida State the biggest run for their money when they went up against Florida State 2-0 at home up there in South Carolina. It wasn't until Florida State poured it on with four unanswered goals to come away with it, but that's the other team I think you have to really look at and say is the, a top contender here for a deep postseason run in the NCAA tournament when we get there. Clemson's been great. They were picked six in the coaches' poll preseason ACC, and they've certainly exceeded those expectations. Sitting in second right now, we'll wait on that result in their game versus Notre Dame. They've got a quality keeper there. Makowitz is, and so they, they have all the talent that they need to really be a dynamic team. I mean, they're the one that was knocking on the door potentially tonight to at least tie Florida State in points. Maybe not get, you know, the one seed, but at least to share the regular season at Florida State. You know, obviously still time left in this game, but up 4-0, it looks really difficult to see how NC State can come away with at least a draw. But even a draw guarantees Florida State the outright regular season championship, too. And it just goes back to how the play in this conference is amongst all teams. As another break for the Seminoles, Jody Brown slips it on the Olsen. Not able to get her foot around the ball. Uh, a couple of missed touches here. First here for Jody Brown. She gets a little bit too far out in front of this one to control. Somehow slips through. And it goes strongly off of Olsen's left foot. Not able to shoot in time on square onto the frame to get that one on net. You see that reaction. And, and honestly, that's a frustration point for Olsen for a lot of times, especially over the last two years, honestly, Jack, where she's either been in that nine spot, she's actually gonna get a was in a position there where it kind of looked familiar to her being used to the nine at the top of the of the forward spots and you know she just hasn't been able to really connect as successfully as she did in 2021 and just off just by a touch and sometimes those breaks go just the wrong way just a little bit off Brian Penske complimenting now her ability out wide as a passer three goals on the season for Olsen 30 career goals for the senior from Sweden. And she's been able to value, see the value in being more of a contributor elsewhere. There's another dangerous cross in the box, Olivia Garcia. Sung the anthem, got a goal. Five nil to Florida State. Jack, she sung the national anthem earlier tonight, and uh, she scored a goal earlier this season. She also sung the national anthem before the game. They might want to just continue to do that. Excellent job by Garcia here, finding a spot, competing against Hall Robinson. That's a beautiful cross, by the way, way out wide. Again, you see Florida State just be so clinical in their play, however they want to score. But getting out wide, they know how to get the ball into a dangerous spot, and Garcia makes the Wolfpack pay making it a 5-0 game. You said it, Trevor. It may just be a trend for Olivia Garcia. Two goals, Honestly. two anthems sung. She's got the pipes. Got pipes on the legs, too, man. Great sing. <laughs> As we all wish we could be. <laughs> I, I think I'd fare, I'd fare okay. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. That's another day for me. That's another time. <laughs> Now back with Gilchrist. Yeah, Garcia really does a nice job of really working and competing for her spot. 
come primarily off the bench this season. It does a nice job really working on the ground, but uh, still able to get into position to f identify the ball in the air and able to redirect with the header. It was a beautifully done process there for the Seminoles. Yeah, very versatile and creative player. Is Olivia Garcia the sophomore? But, you know, on the other side, go back to NC State. A lot of youth on this team. A season that head coach Tim Santoro looking forward to getting back to the NCAA tournament where they've been the last six. Mackenzie, what you got on us for NC State? Thanks, Jack. I spoke with Coach Santoro this morning, and despite this season not going as planned, he's really looking forward to this offseason. Coach said he's excited for his young team to mature and for his injured players to have a chance to get healthy. Coach has high hopes for the Wolfpack next season. That's a foul on the play. Thank you, Mackenzie. That is one thing you never wish injuries. You don't want to see them, but because of injuries, it has forced some players to get more playing time, as I mentioned before. Rosalie Alou, bunch of freshmen, a lot of international freshmen that have got playing time. As we saw at number 17, Brianna Holt will check in for NC State the first time this game. You also see Madison Reed out there, number 18. She's playing high. Played in three matches in all of 2022. Well, also in combination with the youth, you know, there's still veterans on this team, Jack, that can still come back next season. I mean, Monica Warner can still come back. So can Mika Kawagishi. So there's still some solid veteran presence in the midfield for sure. The real question is going to be on top, you know, attacking wise, you know, Hannah Jabril is really going to be a solid piece. And as we saw tonight, Jay Portolo can certainly crack one off and certainly have some some shot and some accuracy from distance, just banged one off the crossbar. Could have oh. been the opening goal of the game, in fact. So you know, they still have all sorts of potential. There's some solid veterans. I, I really do like this back line of theirs. I think they do a nice job. They just got to keep their legs a little bit. This pressure by Florida State is just so debilitating. The back line has a lot of good potential, and they're getting a heavy workload this season with how much the injuries have affected them. They spent a lot of time on defense. So, yes, there will be certainly some turnover, but still, I think as long as they can get off the injury bug that's plagued them the last two seasons, this is a team that can certainly compete and break back into an ACC tournament. No better conference to get those minutes when you're facing some of the top talent in the country. As you said, Trevor, both Weber and Chisholm have been racking up the minutes this season. It was only a couple years ago. Their season actually came to a close here at Florida State. Made it to the second round of the NCAA tournament, falling to Pepperdine. Certainly can put up a fight. I mean, this team has made several Sweet 16s under Coach Santoro's tenure. In fact, from 2016 to 2019, made the Sweet 16 all four years. Or actually, three years, and made the second round another year, 2017. So, certainly capable. And with a talent-rich state of North Carolina, you can definitely find solid recruits, and he's looking forward to that recruiting class next year. But a lot of work to do, and I know he's eager to have this one, uh, this night end for sure, given the eventual result right now, and get right back to work and start building for 2024. No doubt. Look ahead to next year, and that, that's the biggest thing. Sim, Sim, Sim Santoro is able to get these teams ready for the postseason, make a run. Last year was unfortunate. I mentioned it before. It was a both goals scored in regulation were penalty kicks versus UCF. And then you go to penalties, unfortunately lose that game. But it's a goal away from NC State making a second round again as we'll get a stoppage of play for Caitlin Zippe. Now, this is out for Florida State. They just don't want to get bitten by an injury bug themselves. So May looks like she's at least not in agonizing pain, which is a good sign to see. Of course, they're not with Jordan Dudley tonight, who got knocked pretty hard against Duke. And, you know, that's the one player, you know, you got to, I think, has really burst onto the scene as you see Jordan right there sitting and getting a rest tonight. Just a maintenance kind of a situation for Florida State. But she has really burst onto the scene and added this extra element 
that Coach Penske likes to play, and this is, fits right into Jordan Dudley, who's found a home right back there in the nine spot. Started out wide at the beginning of the year, but boy, is she really taking the bull, the, grabbed the bull by the horns there at that nine spot, and been a force in the ACC for Florida State in her freshman season. A force to say the least. She's imposed her will on many ACC defenders this season. Nine goals, six assists for the freshman Dudley. Good to see Caitlin Zappé walk off the field. Her teammates concerned, making sure she is all right and ready to go. Here is Beata Olsen. Up 5-0, Olivia Garcia is still hustling to the corner on Leah Hall Robinson. Able to clear away. Good interception from Reed. And a hard tackle. Mimi Van Zanten. Taking down Alexis Strickland. A moment for NC State to reset. You usually see that number kind of in the reversal for Florida State. Usually they're not the team that's committing the most fouls. NC State's been a heavily penalized team. They lead the ACC in yellow cards up there in fouls. They play physical, but Florida State, as they've shown tonight, have been relentless. I think that in addition to getting your roster back fully healthy, if you're the Wolfpack and Coach Santoro, that's certainly something you'll want to address early into training camp and into the entire offseason. We've got to play smart. We've got to play physical. We've got to be tough in this, in this very competitive conference, but we have got to be surgical in how we do it and can't take yellows, we can't force fouls, we can't get overly aggressive. It's gonna you really put them behind the eight ball in a lot of matches that they go up against. And you can't afford to put yourself at a disadvantage in the ACC. Of course, Coach Santoro definitely knows that, having been in his 11th season now up there in team, Raleigh. And this was a team last year that took down Duke and North Carolina, which not many teams in the ACC can boast. I mean, you can dominate Tobacco Road. That's <laughs> Tobacco Road teams. Now here's Olsen with a chance. Right into the midst for Tapas. Settled back in the net. Another big save to keep Beata Olsen off the score sheet. And yeah, Beata has been just one after another trying to break down this wall. That is that back line and Olivia Pertapis, but she has not found a hole just yet. I'll tell you what, Olivia Pertapis, you know, making a case that she wants to be a starter here in her, what's going to be her senior season come next year. I know the five goals conceded isn't a good thing, but certainly has put on some miraculous saves tonight. 11 shots on goal for Florida State. Here's a look at that last one. A wide angle play here, cross into the box. Good turn by Olsen. And he got a little bit too far out, gave Pertapas a chance to really set her feet and dig in. Crossing the box, no one home. Now with a rip. Showed the goal totals right there for Olsen. Seven in her first season at Florida, the 14 leading Florida State to that national championship. The six in 2022 and just hasn't found the same level of success. But still, fifth overall in the ACC in career goals. Something to be said. She's worked her way over the course of the season trying to battle the best defenders in the country. Yeah, and, that right, in that conference. Yeah, that right there defines her attacking prowess. And she's taken a little bit of a different role now in these last couple of matches. As we've said, moving out wide, more focus on crossing into the box, finding Jordan Dudley, finding Oni Echegini, and she's done so. Two assists in the last two games, five assists on the season. And it helps when you don't have to be the only source of goals. You know, when you are when you feel like you have that, that perch as a top leading goal scorer, 
you know, on your team and a top one in a certain conference, you feel as though you have to bring that every single game, every every single year, because that's what led you to a national championship. Well, Florida State has proven that they don't necessarily need, you know, one elite goal scorer per se above the rest. And, you know, the likes of Oni Echeguini, Jody Brown, they've come in and also provided goals across the board. So everybody's pitching in. There's some great defense. Soto, beautifully done. Her best plays of the night, getting down, winning that ball from Leah Pace. Yeah, you can tell she has expended a lot of energy tonight at that left back position. <laughs> I need some air. Help me out here. I think she's just trying to draw back her teammates. Like, get, get a little closer here a little yeah. bit. I, I need some help. That yes. whole back line been in the entirety of this game. Now just over 12 minutes remaining in the second half. And how this back line applies that going forward, Jack, could be critical. It's the last game you're going to have for those who are coming back. The only one who won't come back is Hall Robinson as a senior, potentially. But still, Weber, Chisholm, Soto, they're all going to be back next season. And this is the last game you're going to have to attack the offseason. This is a reminder in your head. This is the last play you're going to see. This is the standard that you need to raise your level of game to. And they, they, if they apply that correctly, they can take that into a hard-working offseason and come out ready to go in 2024. Here's Pace. She'll take a shot outside over the crossbar for the senior. Pace showing the range. Feed from Sophia Wynn just takes it herself. Doesn't see an option to her left and just decides to crack one. A little too high, a little lean back. Not a bad attempt by the super sub. The super sub indeed, Leah Pace, one of the key transfers for Brian Penske. And this Florida State squad this season, there's a first time right. That's Sophia Wynn getting it on the action. She doesn't have a goal yet this season. So the defense is firing for Florida State. It's been all Knowles in the second half. Four out of their five. Coming in this last 45. Now Garcia on Hall Robinson. Crafty. Catano grabs, takes a deflection off of Brianna Holt and another corner for Florida State, their ninth of the night. Well, still up 5-0. Seminole fans still packing the house. Chanting their team on. That ball served in for Tapas. Punches away, served over to Pace. Half volley just over the bar again. And a substitution for NC State. Amika Kawagishi has played this entire match. We'll check out. Anna Jabril back on, freshman out of Maryland. Titano chasing after. Really a lot more of the young players you see for Florida State getting the valuable playing time they need. Although Pace is still out there. She is indeed. Tries to find Peyton Norse intercepted. In the middle, Jade Bordalo. Holt tried to find Hannah Jabril intercepted by Florida State.
that we mentioned before, North Carolina was down 1-0 to Boston College. That game is now finished. North Carolina able to sneak in a goal, come out with a point against BC. That is unreal, Jack. Eighth draw for the Tar Heels this season. Had almost as many draws they've had wins, and yet they still don't have a defeat, which is also crazy. They have been living on the edge all year long. Yeah, the draws may be unexpected for Anson Dorrance's group, but the undefeated mark is not. You expect that from North Carolina. Soto <laughs> shaking up after the hard shot here. Olsen still working hard, trying to drive one home and right off the foot of Soto. That never feels good. I don't care how much leather is protecting that foot. That's a close range shot. Olsen's got one of the strongest legs in the game. It's a powerful shot when you score 30 career goals. Now the 10th corner kick of the evening for Florida State. Would you love to see the hustle from Soto? As you mentioned right in the beginning, Trevor, leaving it all on the pitch, especially in the remaining final seven minutes of this match. Yeah, big night for the seniors. Obviously none bigger than Lauren Flynn with the hat trick. Good interplay, Gilchrist. Out of bounds for a goal kick. Jack, we should mention, I mean, the amount of seniors tonight, 10 being honored but several of them can still come back. They still have a COVID year that they can use if they want for an extra year of eligibility. Jody Brown, Lauren Flynn, Ronnie White, Beata Olson, Christina Roque, and Caitlin Zabay can all elect to come back if they so choose. So, you know, maybe NC State and some of these other teams hoping that maybe next year they don't see so many of these seniors. A lot of them can still elect to come back and they may not be done with them just yet. Yeah, a lot of impact players Potentially coming back and at Brian Penske's disposal. You've seen this freshman class and Jordan Dudley, Mimi Van Zant, and now Maggie Titano and Peyton Norse in the game. So the future is still bright in Tallahassee. But those nine seniors with potential of leaving have had wonderful careers a part of Florida State. And still with a, a solid recruiting class coming in too with more freshmen for Florida State, you can bet that they will reload with high artillery and weaponry. As you can see, Echeguini, Nesbeth, Pace. Lily Farkas, also a player that transferred from Michigan. She'll be leaving as well. And now a break, Beata Olsen, not slowing down outside, Leah Pace, back post. Some creative play still from Florida State. Well, this is the danger that, you know, you, you give Florida State with how much wide open pockets of space there are. They will run and track that down. They're just not going to wait around anymore. They're going to slam on the gas on the accelerator and keep on pushing it. There's an open highway. You just see how they're able to work and, and operate even with a lot of space that isn't given to them. Now Peyton Norse with that space. Sophia Wynn, a little flick over the top. Olivia Pratapis out. I mean, McKenzie said it right in our open. Expect no complacency with Florida State. Certainly have not seen any in this match tonight. No, like, and, you know, obviously, you know, the circumstances of tonight, you know, nothing really in terms of the ACC tournament, too much at stake. But again, this team has never had an undefeated season before. And, you know, some may say that's hard to believe, but not really, because when you're in the ACC, everybody's going to beat up on each other eventually. Florida State's really found ways to really work through an ACC schedule, even if they don't go undefeated. But this is going to be a team that's going to be remembered for a long, long time if they're able to obviously go on the run and win the national championship. Now here's Norris, the freshman, has space back inside. Knocked away Taylor Chisholm. And another corner for Florida State. But to secure an undefeated regular season, something that no other Florida State team has done before, that alone speaks volumes. That alone will get its deserved recognition for this program. Another milestone, something to etch into the bricks here at Florida State. Especially for Brian Penske in just his second season taking over. 
or a legend in this game, Mark Krikorian. I'd say he's done a good job. Now another ball on the back post. Mimi Van Zanten tries to kick. There's an overhead kick. <laughs> Lauren Flynn. Lauren Flynn. <laughs> just trying to find just new ways to score tonight. Yeah, you score a hat trick. I mean, why not add a, a bicycle to it? You know, Halloween's coming up. I mean, I think she's got her Halloween costume it's already intact, confirmed. right? Confirmed. No doubt. Might have to get that. Might have to ask that after the game. <laughs> If she did have, you know, Halloween plans, I think she may have just found some new ones now. Lauren Flynn's Halloween plans, as well as Florida State, to bring home that ACC championship. See Ron EY making a run, pushing up the field. This is the outside back. Now with Brianna Holt. Jabril out wide. Now a good chance. Leah Hall Robinson opts for the shot. Wide of the net. These are the final minutes for the NC State Wolfpack and for Leah Hall Robinson, her senior year, trying to have one more moment of brilliance, resorting back to her attacking days when she was atop this lineup as a forward and you can see just how tough it's of a season it really is that's been kind of emblematic of the Wolfpack struggles this year not many others in this game have more career games than Leah Hall Robinson her 86 career game tonight 73rd career start a lot of respect for Leah Hall Robinson and a lot asked of her, of course, you know, being, having to be asked to come down and help out this back line for this year, not ideal, but shows what kind of a, a team player she is, doing anything for the team. That certainly doesn't go unnoticed, you know, certainly to the Wolfpack faithful and certainly Coach Santoro. She'll certainly be a, a player that's recognized and remembered for a long time. Leah Hall Robinson, along with Jamise Joseph, as we mentioned, who's not playing tonight. A decorated career for her as a part of the Wolfpack and a player that, again, received so much praise from head coach Tim Santoro and what she meant to this program and taking it over and, and running in it with the rebuild. But tonight is about Florida State and what they've been able to accomplish an undefeated regular season and your ACC regular season champions, the Florida State Seminoles cap off a magical ACC run and now look ahead to postseason play.